different that I use a lot. I'm sitting here at the Green Pediatrics office and uh, I will talk today with Pam, a cozy energy medicine practitioner. Hi, Pam. Hi. I would really like you to explain to us what is Reiki. Okay. Um, Reiki is a very non intrusive therapy. It's um, very gentle therapy as far as healing touch or touch practices. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's amazing how such light touch can actually calm a person's energy. An energy medicine practitioner and a Reiki practitioner um, work together to do these kinds of things to bring the body into balance. But how does it work? Well, the, the, the principle of Reiki, I've been teaching it for almost 17 years now, and the principle of Reiki is basically um, the student learns how to focus on their energy, but also for the energy around us. And we kind of become, um, I want to say, like a conduit because it's very meditative. As a okay. practitioner, I kind of go into like a meditative state, not a trance, nothing like that. Your body is almost 85% fluid and electromagnetic energy. Mm -hmm. And so by me working on someone, I've been trained and I train people to allow that energy to flow out their hands. We have many energy vortexes in our hands and that flows through our hands. Um, some practitioners you can feel heat, some you can feel coolness. But what's amazing to me is that I just participate by loaning my energy with the energy around me. And then as I place my hands on someone, mm -hmm. That energy transfers to them and then their body dictates where it needs to go. So it promotes balance through physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual balance, which will help to create homeostasis. So basically I wanted to just clear up because many people think that you have to have like a special talent in order to do Reiki, that you have to be born with some gift. No. But anybody you mentioned, anybody can do Reiki when you're trained, right? I, I, I think I said, I taught 17 years ago, I started teaching. And to my surprise, when I looked at the books, I've taught over a thousand people how to do Reiki. Um, and that's children from the age of three years old up to, I think my oldest student is in her 80s. Amazing. Um, there's not a lot to it. It is a two-day class and it can be very spiritual for a person because it helps us to heal as well. But what I notice with children, when we do Reiki with children, it calms them down, it helps them to sleep, it can help them to have better focus, it can help them to relieve some pain, and we've even used it in sometimes to even help with conditions like constipation and things like that because the body relaxes. And so it gives the body the opportunity to have that natural flow. So you mentioned quite a few of the benefits of the Reiki, yes. but can you kind of tell us, I know there's so much more to it, yes. so who can benefit from a Reiki session? Oh my, okay. Everyone can benefit, but as saying that, I will also say some people may choose to not try Reiki because it's something they're just not interested in, mm -hmm. but they could benefit from it. Anyone can. Um, it can be very subtle to where it just relaxes you, or it could be very profound to where it relieves your pain. Um, I actually learned Reiki in the beginning because I used to suffer from migraines. And after all these tests, they couldn't really find anything wrong, and someone mentioned trying Reiki, and that's where I got started. I worked in the hospital, and I thought, well, that would be great for patients as well. But after my first class, from that day on, I never had another migraine, which was amazing to me. But it truly does help the body and the circulatory system to just relax. I know you have also a lot of oncology patients, right? Many. I've been working with cancer patients now for, I want to say, almost 15 years. And that can be profound. We have seen things from helping them to bring their white blood count back up. Mm -hmm. It takes their stress away, their fear. Mm -hmm. But it also helps them with nausea. Mm -hmm. And Which is big. It is in, huge. In chemotherapy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so um, many times I've seen, especially after two or three days after a chemo treatment, they'll begin to what we call crash as far as they just ache all over and they feel really bad. And if I can either get to them or if they can come in and I'll give them a treatment, 
they just begin to pink up. They begin to relax. And the next thing I know, they're saying, I'm feeling so much better. But there's been documentation that blood pressure will change mm -hmm. and that the white blood cell count actually sometimes will come up from that. So that is probably one group that we have seen a very profound results with. Um, and in many hospitals in many areas throughout the country, um, they do recommend for the oncology patients to receive Reiki to help de-stress them and make them feel safe. I think that's one of the biggest things. Pre and post-operative is very well. Yes. Because it helps with minimal swelling. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest thing is just relaxation and feeling that they have some control because I can teach them how to do it as well. So can you explain to me and to the audience also what is the difference between now Reiki mm -hmm. and energy medicine? Because for the longest time I've been mixing it and saying like Reiki for everything, yes. but it's so not that. No, so. it's not. Um, ironically, in one of my Reiki classes that I was doing, I went to buy some books for my students and I found this kit that said energy medicine and I thought, oh my gosh, I, that sounds so intriguing. So I bought it. And then I got home and the author of the book actually had sent a postcard and there was one in the mail that she was going to be doing a seminar. So I looked at my husband and I said, I need to go. Mm -hmm. Energy medicine, Eden energy medicine, is a practice to where um, one person by the name of Donna Eden had discovered that by taking many different um, therapies like Qigong and yoga and um, you know just many different holistic treatments and therapies and she combined them and she started working with meridians mm -hmm. which is our energy flow mm -hmm. Um, acupressure points with the lymphatic system and neurovascular system. The difference between energy medicine and Reiki is Reiki is so subtle that I can actually just place my hand above you mm -hmm. and you can feel, can feel the warmth. Okay, right. yes. without mm -hmm. touching. So for like AIDS patients, cancer patients, elderly, our skin gets very sensitive as we get older. Mm -hmm. So almost no touch and we can still feel that energy. But with energy medicine, we actually work on specific points, okay. acupressure points, the meridians. I don't use needles, but I do do acupressure. And I can apply through different um, techniques a specific thing for different things in the body to correct um, energy issues. What I love about all of these things that we do is that they are not a cure-all and they are not to replace the medical community. It's complementary too, and it's for us to work together. And that's where we see the most profound results. When I worked in the hospital, it was devastating to see that patients come in and they're there and you're there to help save them. And so we're stripping them of their clothes and we're putting tubes everywhere and it's very invasive. But if we just take a moment and if we just connect, which they don't have time to do, but in Reiki you can, you see them relax. You see them feel a little more safe. Mm -hmm. And then they start to listen. Oh, okay, I, I, I can hear you now. With energy medicine, I also work with people to help them to have better focus. There's a routine that we do that's called the daily energy routine. And it takes five minutes, but it works on your immune system, your autoimmune. It helps to bring focus. You know, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body and the left brain is the right. And if we get stressed and anxious, these things begin to kind of go like this. Mm -hmm. And then we can't think straight and we have trouble focusing, which causes panic, stress, and anxiety. Stress is one of the major causes for many diseases and disorders that we have in our culture. Mm -hmm. So if we learn these techniques and I can teach people how to do them through tapping and stretching, if you notice, that's a little more invasive than the Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, but those are techniques I can give to them to use and they'll start to see improvement. We do not administer medication, but our hands are our tool. Great. I just wanted to mention that because Pam was mentioning uh, that she was working in the hospital. She used to be a nurse, and then and now she actually I was CNA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, um, you started going into the energy field. And yes, I started out very basic. I started out working as a unit clerk, I think, in the ER, mm -hmm. and then just before I finished my time in the hospital. Um, they were doing away with all those things and they started cross-training for CNA. Right. Um, and that was my cue to <laughs> say, no, I need to look for something. Do I want to go more medical? And I decided to go more holistic, mm -hmm. more natural. 
Well, but that was extensive training. training. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, like nice integration on every on of everything Absolutely. together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, I wanted everybody to just to kind of hopefully get a better grip of what is Reiki and what is energy medicine, and then I would like also Pam to maybe show us. Uh, a little bit of what you do. I can show you really briefly just a couple mm-hmm. things. Um, what we can do is normally, if you were to come in to see me, I would mm-hmm. either I would have the the, um, the patient or the client lie on a table, very similar to this. So do you want me to lie on the Could table? Could you do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm going to actually put this so you have a little more comfort there. Mm-hmm. And what really helps to calm someone down and relax them is to uh, dim the lights and put some calming music on. And it just takes me a moment so I can focus. And after I'm done with my focusing, I breathe. And I'll ask you to take a nice deep breath in and exhale slowly. And then I'll just start very gently here. And I don't want to be too invasive, so I don't lay my hands on her face, but just above. And then they'll usually feel an energy or, you know, something coming from the hands. I can feel like a heater in front of my face. (laughs) And every practitioner is different. You know, our our bodies, our lives are just as individual as our thumbprint, you know. So we're all very individual, even in our practice. So, but it's just very gentle. And there's many different positions that we will do. But in that process, it begins to relax the body. And the difference with Reiki and other things is once my hands are here, if her stomach's upset or if her leg's bothering her, or maybe she has a back issue, it may actually begin to go away and I haven't even gotten there yet. And that's because in the beginning of our talk I said once this energy leaves my hands, it begins to enter the client's body. And then their body determines where they need it the most. Maybe it's not a physical issue, maybe it's an emotional issue. And that's what's causing their their pain. And it just relaxes them and calms them down. Babies benefit a great deal from this um, because we can just hold them very quietly and let that flow. And they'll feel that, and then they'll feel your calm, which will help them to be calm. Thank you. Thank you. I kind of almost fell asleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us. And thank you, Pam, for devoting your time to explain oh, a little bit more you're about welcome. what you do. You're welcome. There's one more thing I just want to say because we mentioned it. And if you just take the time to just tap, because we do a lot of different things. This is the kidneys, believe it or not, the last acupressure point. Mm-hmm. And this can help wake you up, but it also helps with your immune system. So Which tapping. is so important now. We are getting into flu season, so that can be Tap a good here. routine in the yes. morning and at night. And there's an actual routine that we do give out, but that's part of it. So thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.